Hello and welcome to On Point. I'm Tasneem Hanafi. The dating world has changed with the introduction of technology. Social media now play a central role in relationships. Online dating sites like eHarmony and Match.com make it easier and more comfortable for people to meet and fall in love. But a new trend in the dating arena that is gaining popularity is social sex applications. These apps help people find others in their area for a no-strings-attached one-night stand. Apps like Grindr, Blender, and Scout have become popular among people who want a quick and easy hookup. By using the GPS on cell phones, these apps allow users to view profiles, see what people are looking for, and who is in the area. Within minutes, you could be having sex with a stranger. Blender has more than 2 million users worldwide and caters to a straight crowd, while Grindr targets the gay community. On this episode of On Point, we will explore what attracts people to these sites from a user's and a sociologist's point of view. On Point's Erica Yasuo has more on the story. Thanks, Tasmin. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you very much. Now, I'm here today with California State University sociologist and marriage family therapist, Dr. Christian Curry, and Pierce College sociologist Robert Wanzer, and social media app user Minor Portillo. So I'm going to start off with a couple questions today. So this one is for the entire panel. The first question is, why do you guys feel like people are using these type of applications? We could start off from this side. What do you feel like there? Well, using? it's uh, an easy way to have sex without cost, without having to uh, go and take someone out to dinner or flirt with someone at the bar. And uh, if you know someone's ready, willing, and able, 100 feet away, you can maybe go find them. What's your take on this, Robert? I would, I would elaborate on what uh, Dr. Curry was saying. It's part of a larger trend, too, where lots of things are becoming appified, you know, to find new, more efficient ways of doing this. And, you know, we see this in a lot of areas of society. And combine that with this um, uh, increase in hookup culture amongst young people, the app's mm -hmm. primary users, um, really no reason not to, right? If, if there's an encouragement to hook up, and then this is a way to do it easily with low risk right. and to know ahead of time that this person is open for that. Right. Mm. Okay, and Minor, what is your take on this? I mean, if it's encouraged, then by all means. But it's also a social network to find people, have friends. It's not just for sex. Um, that's just one of the possibilities or yeah. where you want it to get to if you are that person. Okay. And Dr. Curry, I'm just going to go back to you. Do you feel like this reflects something new about our 21st century culture, or is it just another way of using technology? Well. Um, you know, technology does have an impact on human behavior, and it does change relationships. Um, we've had, you know, free sex uh, since the 60s. It kind of went out of style for a while, but now it seems to come back with, you know, the rise of the hookup culture, which is, you know, free sex among college students, where you just go in, you have sex with somebody, and you never see him again. And this seems like kind of a way to do that using um, using technology so it makes it easier and without cost um, so I think free sex comes in and out of style historically okay and do you feel like and this is for both you and Wanzer here do you feel like this is making dating more casual and impersonal or do you feel like we have the same romantic intimacy and level of love and trust and etc those kinds of things as we did 25, 30 years ago, and we could talk, go from Wanzer back to Dr. Curry. Sure. Um, I don't think we've lost the love or intimacy. I think the part of the thing is that we emphasize the hookup, and so that's what you're supposed to want. And so it's kind of interesting because um, it kind of, where does that leave those who don't want that, right, who just want a relationship or something? They're kind of left out of that. Um, but I think we focus on it, and it's, it's salacious. It grabs our attention. And this app just makes it, or these apps and the type of things we're talking about, just make that easier to do. I don't know that it's necessarily all that much more, um, uh, I don't think necessarily that love and intimacy is going anywhere, but this app, as Minor pointed out, could be used for that, to find people with common interests, right? Um, I think, though, that there's obviously, as Minor pointed out, depending on who the user is and what they want from it. So I'm not sure that it's necessarily getting rid of love or intimacy. Uh, just facilitating the contact and then from where that leads has a lot to do with the cultural shifts that Dr. Curry was mentioning. Do you concur with this, Dr. Curry? I do, but I, I wonder, you know, 
Sociologists see Americans as very individualistic, meaning that um, we put our own self-interest before all else. And I'm wondering if it's indicative of movement towards more individualism, whereas, you know, you don't even want to go, you don't have to even go to a bar and it, have a kind of an interactional dance you do to get to know someone to see if they want to have a one-nighter. Now you don't even have that kind of cost. Now you can just go and you see someone on the phone that's a hundred yards away or a mile away and, you know, text them, you want to have a hookup, and wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. So I wonder if it's, if it's an extension or it's an indicator that we're becoming even more individualistic than we, uh, we previously were yeah. as a culture. Okay, okay. And this is a question for the entire panel also. Do you feel, and we're going to start with Minor over here, do you feel like people are using this because people think that it's easier than going out and socializing? Or do you feel like people use this because they're actually comfortable with social media and they feel like, you know, they, they're just very familiar with it? I'm going to speak in my own terms. I mean, basic. I use it and um, I just touch it, you know. I just I, I'm not on it like that. I, I I go out still. I meet people at grocery stores, uh, retail stores, wherever it is. But it's just definitely another market uh, to give yourself that better opportunity to get to find love or to hook up. It depends what you're looking for. That's all it is. But these apps will help. Mm -hmm. What about you, Robert? Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting point that Minor brings up. It's not necessarily, I don't, you know, it's not necessarily cruising, per se, to use this, right? It's in your daily life, you're at the grocery store, you happen to notice that there's somebody there, they have some similar interests as you, right? It kind of is that uh, the bar one of those initial barriers is removed to then initiate something further, a relationship, getting to know this person, whatever else it may be. And Dr. Curry, last but not least, what is your take on this? On, uh, on... I just answered right, the question. Do, okay, okay. Uh, my, my take on... Do you feel like it's... People don't like, you know, people like to not go out because they're, they're just familiar with social media and that's why they use oh, I it think versus it could going be. out. I, I think it could be because, you know, social media is very popular among young people. So it's another way to, uh, to, to meet somebody and it breaks down barriers. But I also worry that technology is undermining our relationships with others. Huh. You know, the Amish, one of the reasons why the Amish don't have telephones, they don't use technology, is because they worry that it undermines their relationships with others. On a phone, you don't have to go and talk to someone face to face. And, you know, I wonder if this is, I don't know for sure, but I wonder if this is an indicator that people are having trouble in our society with face-to-face -face relationships mm -hmm. and you know they don't want relationships where they have to give anything right where they can you know they can they can go and have a sexual encounter um, I know that's not just what it's about but I know that's what it's being used for mm -hmm. without any kind of cost at all you don't even have to buy a person a drink do you feel like <coughs> these kinds of applications make it easier for couples to cheat on each other when they're in relationships? Sure. Okay. Sure. And what do you, what do you feel about the progression? Is there, how are STDs related to this? Do you feel like it's booming because of these kinds of things? Um, how are STDs related to, well, whenever you have casual sex without thinking about uh, protecting yourself, you know, when you're having casual sex with lots of different partners, you run the risk of spreading STDs widely. So if people are doing this without thinking and without using protection, then yes, it can, it can facilitate STD growth. Okay. And this is the last and final question for you right now is um, some people say this behavior is immoral or it is deviant. What is the difference exactly between immoral and deviant? And is this deviant behavior? I wouldn't call it deviant behavior because so many people are partaking in it, especially young people. Deviant behavior is behavior that most people are not engaged in and it's kept hidden. Morals have to do with social rules about the correct way to treat your fellow man. And in today's uh, day and age, 
you know, people don't see casual sex so much as amoral. So I don't see it as amoral necessarily or deviant from my standpoint as a sociologist. Yeah, I'd concur. I mean, <laughs> for something to be deviant, it has to depart widely from norms, right? Right. Social norms. And if the norm is toward a hookup culture, which was right. beginning long before these apps were introduced, uh, then this wouldn't be considered deviant. Okay. And, uh, and also, to say it's immoral would be a value judgment. And mm. as sociologists, we tend to not do that in sociology, but, you know, we're people, so. But as far as, um, is it immoral, right, that's a, that's a value judgment. Right, but I think most mainstream college uh, campus students here at CSUN would not see it as something that is hurting someone else right. or yeah. is a sin. So, so I, that is the definition, it is hurting someone else. Well, morals are, are how to treat oh. your fellow man in a, in a proper ethical way. At one point in time it would have been seen as immoral. Mm. Like during Puritan times it might have been seen <laughs> as immoral. But today in 2013 I don't think most young people see this kind of behavior as, as unethical or immoral. Now, going to Dr. Wanzer, are there emotional or psychological benefits from having this, you know, no strings attached kind of sexual encounters? Um, firstly, Mr. But thank you Mr. for, um, yeah, Mr. Dr. Curry. Um, uh, yeah. So, are you asking, are there benefits to it? Yes. Are there psychological benefits? Um, well, I mean, there's. I suppose there can be like en endorphins and feel goodness, right, from that mm -hmm. result, but. Um, I think a lot of um, a lot of the I, there's not a lot of research on the use of these apps, but there is research on the hookup culture. Dr. Wade out of uh, Occidental does a lot of this, um, and she talks about that a lot of them, you know, don't feel good about themselves afterward, or a lot of them, uh, depending on the hookups, uh, more so for for women than men, but for both as well. Um, and that uh, there's a there's a there's a there's something left wanting. There, it's not a fulfilling experience for a lot of them. Um, and especially since the, the problem really is on the emphasis of hooking up rather than the uh, emphasizing other forms of human contact, other forms of emotional connections. Um, so in that regard, it, it can be a, it can be a, a negative um, psychologically. Um, but it's more so from the not emphasizing the other human expression and only emphasizing the hookup. Now, for those who want to hook up, right, it, it is what it is. But to only emphasize that's problematic. Right, and I think that the reason why women have a harder time with it than men is women are still socialized uh, to believe that if they have casual sex, they're sluts. Mm -hmm. And I know that women have more sexual freedom than they have in the past, but that's still very much a part of our culture. Mm -hmm. And that for a, a woman that isn't married to have sex, it should, they should be in a committed relationship. That's generally the social norm mm. and you know the word love should be involved so that's why they feel guilty after they've engaged in this because of uh, the cultural values and morals imposed on them in our society. Now you were explaining to me earlier and I'd like you to explain to me what again that is the terminology that women are promiscuous if they do something promiscuous there's a certain terminology you were talking about. Yeah we were talking before Dr. Curry and, and Eric uh, we were talking about um, it's slut shaming. Um, it's making women feel bad about anything sexual as Dr. Curry was saying without you know love right if you don't if you have sex without love uh, that's the, de the definition of a slut and that's a bad thing um, and it's it's you know our our culture is still very much in that way um, favored toward men, right, at the expense of women. So when men do it, they're studs. Right. When women do it, they're sluts. Yeah, it's, it can all be, also be called slut bashing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would agree. I would agree with that. But if they're just going to have sex, just have sex. I mean, if there's going to become, uh, if there's going to be emotions involved, so be it. But if just because they're having casual sex, I wouldn't consider them a slut. I mean, they know what they want. I mean, if they're throwing it around everywhere, then they're called sluts. But mm -hmm. if they're just casually doing it, they know what they want. People have needs and they succumb to them. Is there some kind of backlash? Like after, like, you know, they've had that kind of experience? Have anyone told you that they've had that kind of story or anything like that happened to them before? As far as what exactly? As far as exactly after they've hooked up, have, has anyone come telling you that they've been called? That they felt bad because... Yes, or they felt like, you know, they, they were felt like a slut. Or, I mean, yeah. I've heard conversations like, I've personally had conversations like that. I just don't look at it that way. You know, I let them know that, I mean, it's just something we were both into and uh, we got into it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't consider it a slut. I still talk to them these today and um, as far as I know we're friends. 
but uh, I wouldn't consider them a slut. Even if they had sex with like 10 guys, it just, it doesn't matter to me. It really depends who's looking at it. If you're that judgmental and you really want to go into it and consider them that, then so be it. But as far as 10, 15 guys, I wouldn't even make it a big difference. I mean, they're just living. Mm -hmm. And this question is for all the panel. Why do you feel like this, these type of mobile sexual encounter applications have surged incredibly over the past several years? I mean, it, it goes back to it um, in time. A lot of people even paid for sex back in the day. So prostitution is still popular. Uh, you just, if you, you talked about cost, if you want to have sex, it can either be free or you, it's going to cost you some money. It just depends how far you're willing to go with it. How, how, how deep are your pockets? How are you going to um, work the angle? I mean, I have no problem talking to somebody at a grocery store, finding out if we want to go get a drink later and see what happens there. But I mean, I get turned down a lot, but then I do have positive numbers as well. Um, anybody in the app, using the apps, that's just another market to get into. You can say hi to 50 women. Five of them will probably respond. One you'll get lucky with, and it just—it's convenient. I mean, you're just throwing yourself out there, and whoever's going to catch it, there it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, to that you have to say, there's also been an increased use of uh, banking apps, right? And so right. it's not necessarily just this that's on the rise. Mm -hmm. We're using apps for all sorts of things that we used to have to do the old-fashioned way. Right, but it's it's quicker, like you said. It's more convenient, and you have a wider range of people you have access to, and you can do it in the supermarket. You don't have to go home and sit on your computer. Mm -hmm. You can do it wherever you are. Now, why do you feel I, I'm confused about a little bit about this? Because I've done some research, and it indicates that a lot of men use this more than women. And we could just start from right to left, going this way. Okay. Why do you feel that is? Because you know, there's there's a lot of women out there. Why aren't there? more men using it, more women using this actually. Because they're scared, they're, they're emotional, scared. They, you know, they don't want to come into something that they're going to be in danger. As a man, I don't ever worry about that. I contact somebody, if I'm going to go meet up with you, I, have, I don't have that fear uh, where something's going to happen. But I mean, as, 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 a women, as women in the world, they kind of, I would say they kind of feel inferior at this, in this market where they just can't do that. And like like you said, you know, they don't want to be considered sluts. If they if they're that hard on themselves, then that's what it is. Oh uh, yeah, I would agree with a lot of what mine. So the only thing I would add is it's not so much that they feel hard on themselves, but others kind of look down upon them for doing so. And I think there is, still is a stigma, you know. And I think we were talking about this. I mean, you know, to to have a phone out with the Blender app, right? And people are gonna go, oh, I know what you're doing. Right, you know, this sort of thing that there's still going to be that kind of judgmentalness to it that isn't so much there for men, right? Men are supposed to, they're expected to be sexual, they're expected to be wanting and seeking. Um, and so, in a way, you know, they, they don't have to deal with that, so there's less inhibitions against doing so. Um, and the types of relationships, too, right? You know, uh, a lot of men do want those sort of hookup encounters, and that's, you know, those sort of apps are great for that. Whereas a lot of times women, through socialization and, and that kind of thing, they want relationships, or if they do want a relationship, you know, they don't look at that as the most, you know, it's like, like a singles bar, right? It's not maybe the best place for a relationship. Right, and if the women do uh, want do that, they have to be circumspect about it. If they're going to go out and have a lot of sex, they can't talk about it. They may want it, but because they'll be shamed or bashed. So I remember we were talking about that mm -hmm. when you're at the bar, at the singles bar, the men will have it open. They'll have the app right there, and it, and it could be a, a sort of a bravado because men are, are seen as studs for having, and you never see women doing it. And it doesn't mean that they're necessarily not doing it, but if they're going to, they have to be circumspect. They have to keep it quiet. And this is for all the group. Why? Okay, I understand that perspective, but why are there more homosexual men doing this more than straight men? I, I believe that in the homosexual culture there is a uh, kind of an ethic or uh, a uh, a cultural not a rule, but you know it's part of the culture to to have free sex. And I think it just carries over to the app world. What do you think about this, Wayner? I wouldn't say it's just about the free sex. I mean, gays just came out of the closet a couple years ago, and everybody started to say they were gay for whatever. I mean, I, I have no problem with them. That's awesome, you know, live your life. But it was almost about that time for them, because for so long they were in the closet or were 
whatever you want to call it, and they didn't accept that themselves that they were gay because they were scared of what people would think. But you know what? I have to. I have to stop you for a minute they've been out for a, a while yeah they have they've been out for maybe 20 30 years no, right and you know there's uh there's kind of the notion of the bathhouse and um there's always been there's been a, a strong gay culture for 30 years and the culture not all gay men are involved in this but they're um part of the culture includes kind of having this um you know these this free love like they had everybody was having in the 60s there's and, not a lot of restrictions right there is in the sort of puritan holdover in the dominant culture yes exactly it's yeah but there's been research that's said that women with other women there's you know they just don't do these kinds of things right because even if though they're lesbians they still have internalized the cultural norm that you don't mm. have a lot of sex they're still re reared as women and that you know their you know relationships sh relationship should be about love, and um, so they can't, there's no escaping it even if you're a lesbian. So it doesn't matter necessarily what sexual orientation you are. The is what you're saying. They're still this gender in the end, right? In the end, it doesn't matter. Right, exactly. In the end, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's you're the same gonna find thing. Whatever. Guy is a guy, you know, psychologically, you know, his desires sexually. It doesn't matter, sexual orientation. I mean, I don't know too much about. I don't think it's so they, much. Whatever they do, right, I, I, I don't mean. I mean, maybe you do have or friends or. Oh, I have plenty of gay friends. And that's cool, but. I don't think it's so much about desire. I think it's how you interpret the desire and express the desire, and in our, uh, in our culture, men are allowed to show more sexual expression and have more sexual. Exp uh, expression and expected to and, ex and even be applauded for it they're right some men they're expected to even if they don't want to whereas women are are encouraged and taught and um, are penalized for uh, being very expressive or acting on their sexual desires did you want to say something Lynn? um no, it just kind of brought I brought up a story and I kind of laughed about it because you're right. Oh, we we would love to hear the story that you're laughing about. Okay. <laughs> um, Is it what? a certain experience that you had? Not me personally, but I mean, as she was saying, men get applauded for being a stud, and I applaud them. I applaud all of them, even if you're a woman. You know, you do your thing, whatever you want, just do it. But as far as my friend goes, uh, he went out one night, uh, hang hung out with a one, a girl. Went back to her house, hooked up, woke up about three or four in the morning, went next next door to her friend's um, her na her roommate's room, and uh, did his thing there. Wow, wow. that's pretty awesome. It, whether, whether you're a man wow. or a woman, that's... I mean that's awesome. Mm. Well, I just want to ask you some more questions, Mayor, because Feel we didn't free. really get to you yet. Is Tell me exactly how these kinds of applications work because, you know, as I don't really use these programs, so how does this work initially? Download it, go onto it, set up a profile, name, age, location. Um, it'll, it'll put you in a specific area, Los Angeles area, 30, 40, 50 miles, depending how far you're willing to go out for whatever. I mean, a good time, sex. Uh, whatever you want, it's uh, it's all accessible to you just by getting on and uh, seeing if you're going to get lucky. Now, does it track your location? Or? It doesn't track you. No, I've never had that. I wouldn't want to. I believe that's <laughs> up to the user, right? You can yeah, turn it on, was, you can turn it off. That's not cool, though. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. <laughs> I was thinking that there was a tracking thing, like, you know, the, it what we were GPS, saying, it's 100, so. 200 feet away. There, it, no, I was reading it? there was a, a tracking thing, and that you can, in, 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 um, congested areas like our own where there are a lot of people you can find someone a hundred feet away from you mm -hmm. or just across the street okay. you know so in you know we live in an area that's very densely populated okay. that's true hmm. minor I'm just curious what is the best thing that's ever happened to you on these sexual application sites or these sexual applications the goal is to hook up the goal is to hook up and that's what happened and that's the best experience. You don't have. Oh no! I mean, as for oh, I have like plenty of stories. I have I have stories, but I mean, what I look for is a good time. I haven't been in a relationship for a while, but I mean, I'm still single, young, and I just that's all I want to do is have fun.
until that time comes along where, you know, I want to join the rest of America and have a <laughs> wife and kids. But until then, I want to live my life pretty freely. Now, the part that I would add, too, is that I don't think that a college student 20 years ago wouldn't have said that or even 30 years ago, right? I, th I think that's not. a sentiment that's been around for a while, and the app just makes it easier in some ways to, to do that, right? It does. It does in many ways, in many ways. Why don't you want to have a relationship now? I'm not looking for one. But it's, okay. what would, why aren't you looking for one? What is there in a relationship that you don't want right now? At this time, at, in, in what, how mine, what my mind is, is where I'm attracted to black women, and that's what I want. Um, for the time. Maybe I don't want that in a month from now or a week from now. I don't know how I'm going to feel from then. I could go to white, Asian. Okay, but if you had a relationship with somebody, what is involved in that relationship that you don't want right now, that you want later? Oh, I'm, I'm sensitive. I'm emotional. I can do that, but I don't, I don't want to be in a committed relationship. I still want to live my life freely. So you don't want to have to be told that you can only have sex with one person. You want to have, like in a relationship, a lot of times they're exclusive well, sexually. I, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to cut you off. But um, what last, very last question, why do you feel like people should use it? Or why do you, what's your take on it's that? Convenient. It's convenient. It's so convenient. You'll be surprised. If you have a problem talking to people face to face, get online. It's there for you. There's so many apps out there that you can use to your benefit. And, and it's so convenient that you just go ahead, like I said, log in, put your age, address, whatever, not your address, but location, and you'll find somebody. Okay. Thank you all very much. All right. Thank you. up on sex don't give up on birth control either there are more methods than you think find yours at bedsider.org welcome to my block party glad you can make it the only triple doubles you get come with fries last time you blocked someone you were online i can do this all day your moves are just gay <laughs> Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative, it's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Learn more at fatherhood.gov. We would like to thank you for watching On Point. You can follow us on Facebook by searching CSUN On Point and on Twitter at CSUN On Point, all one word. The show appears on our website at CSUNTVNews.com and we air on television channel LA36 Sundays at 4 o'clock. For Erica Yasuo and all of us on On Point, I'm Tasneem Hanafi. Thank you for watching. <laughs>